In this short video, we'll take a look at one of the newest features added to RESA 3D, the seismic design of concrete shear walls according to ACI 318.14, Chapter 18. Now we're going to begin in RESA floor. We've just designed um, our slab and our concrete columns for all the gravity loading. And in order to do the lateral analysis and design, we need to switch to RESA 3D. So we're going to go ahead and choose the director button and then RESA 3D. Now immediately we're presented with the dialogues for the wind load application and the seismic load application. We're not going to make any changes to those right here, but we can just go ahead and click OK. Now that will generate the wind and seismic loads on the model. Now if we wanted to make changes, we can go ahead and click, for instance, the seismic tab to change the different provisions, parameters of the seismic load, and then regenerate that load. Now two things I wanted to make note of. The first is we can see the R factor. This is the seismic response modification factor. And that's going to be used, obviously, in the calculation of our load. And then finally, we see the overstrength factor, this omega factor. And that's going to be used when we generate the overstrength combinations. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to enable the diaphragms um, that we created in Risa Floor. These are rigid diaphragms that are going to be used to transfer load throughout the model. Next, we need to establish these walls as seismic walls. Basically, we need to set our seismic design rules. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the seismic design rules spreadsheet from the data entry tab. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the tab for concrete walls. And we can see here we already have a type of uh, seismic design rule created for walls. Now in this, we have a specific wall type. So we have three specific wall types. The first is ordinary. This is a wall type in which no extra checks beyond what's required for non-seismic are done. The next is an intermediate precast. This uses the provisions specific to ACI 318.14, section 18.5, and assumes that we're using seismic design category D, E, or F. And finally, the one that we're going to use is the provisions for special structural walls. So this utilizes the provisions specific to ACI 318.14, section 18.10. Additionally, we need to define for special seismic walls, we need to define the diagonal bars that are going to be used for the coupling beam design above the openings. And so in this case, we're just going to set that bar size as a number six bar. Now, in order to then establish our seismic design rules to the walls, we could double click in, on each individual wall and go ahead and set the seismic design rule here from none to whatever the seismic design rule is. Or we can go into the wall panel spreadsheet and into the advanced tab, and we can go ahead and set those seismic design rules right here. Now when we're ready, we've got all the information for the model created properly. We can go ahead and set up our load combinations. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the load combinations button to open the spreadsheet. Now here we already have some gravity and wind load combinations created, but we need to use the load combination generator to create our seismic combinations. So here on the seismic tab, we can see the different region and the different load combination code that we can use. In this case, we're going to use the most recent IBC LRFD strength based combination set. And so we have some different options for seismic load combinations and overstrength combinations. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the X and Z, the bidirectional combinations, to include the redundancy factor and the vertical component. I'm also going to do the same for the overstrength combinations, and in this case include the vertical component as well as the non-orthogonal combinations. Now when we're ready, we can go ahead and click Generate to generate the rest of the combinations. And so if we look at our combination spreadsheet here, we can see that SDS factor that's used in the vertical uh, component. We can also see the redundancy factor and the omega factor here in the combinations. Now when we're ready, when we have all our combinations generated, we can go ahead and click the Solve, Batch, and Envelope button to create the analysis and do the design. Now when we're ready, we can go ahead and choose to review our results either in a spreadsheet format or in a detailed output. And so let's start by reviewing those results in a spreadsheet format. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the load combinations. And I'm going to choose our wall panel design spreadsheet. So here we can see just the basic ACI 318.14 design in concrete in and concrete out. But really what we want to pay attention to is we want to pay attention to this wall panel seismic tab. So in this tab, the first thing that it does is it identifies those wall panels that we needed to actually run the seismic checks for. So in this case, we didn't need to do it for any of these full wall panels, but instead we needed to do it only for this wall panel that had our door openings in it. And so that's the wall panel two here. The next thing we can do is we can see the different elements that are being designed. First, the three coupling beams. So those are the beams that are going to be above the openings. And then finally, the piers. So we can see the unity check for in-plane shear in each of those. We can also see the corresponding load combination. 
And then finally, we can see the, whether or not a boundary zone is required in this particular case. Now, if we want a little bit more information beyond what we see here in the spreadsheet, we can go ahead and close this out. And then I'm going to choose this detail button. And then with that, I'm going to go ahead and select the wall panel itself. So here we initially get our overall wall design. And so what we can see right out is we first have a summary of everything. So we've got all the loads applied, all the other information about this particular wall. We get a graphic here that shows the seismic piers. Now these piers are determined based on table 18.10.1 of ACI 318.14. We can also see the diagonal bars that are created in those coupling beams. And this is because we're using a special seismic shear wall. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see all our general results. So we can see our different region results, our wall pier and coupling beam results. And then we can see all the different reinforcement that's provided, whether it's vertical or horizontal reinforcement or that diagonal reinforcement in the coupling beams. We can also see the pier reinforcement very specific to the seismic reinforcing piers. So here are that vertical and horizontal reinforcement. Now, if we want to look at things in even more detail, we can switch from a wall view to a pier view. Now, when we look at the pier view, again, we get some of the general information but we also get the seismic check information. So in this particular case for peers, the software is checking the provisions from ACI 318.14 chapter 18, uh, including the definition of closed hoops, the min and max bar spacing for both horizontal and vertical bars, the need uh, for cross ties, and also the wall peer shear checks. So we can see those different shear checks here going on from that information. Now, one thing to note here is this uh, tab or this portion called boundary elements. For the boundary zones, the program performs a check of the maximum extreme fiber compression stress for the worst case earthquake combination. So if this value exceeds this 0.2 F prime C, which in this case is 0.8 KSI, then a boundary zone is required. So in this case, we don't have any boundary elements that are not required. The program, however, will not design the boundary zone. It's only going to identify if they are indeed necessary. Now, if we want to look at even more detail, we can go ahead and look at the information on the coupling beams by selecting opening. Now this is the detail information about the inf about the about what's going on above the door openings. And so here we can see the coupling beam results because we're using a special seismic shear wall. Now there's a few things that are required in order to do the design of these. First, we need bars at each face. And next, we also need to have the outer bars be our horizontal bars. Now both of these things can be set specifically in our wall design rules spreadsheet. So if we click on our wall design rules spreadsheet, and we go ahead and click on the concrete wall miscellaneous tab, we can see we can set our outer bars to horizontal and our location to each face, as well as other miscellaneous elements um, as far as cover go and, and other, other things for the, sh the shear wall analysis. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you have any questions, please contact us at support at or visit our website, resa.com. Thanks very much.